What's going on everyone? Today we are back with some more Bleach Thousand Year Blood War with a little review over episode 3 of Core 3. And I don't know why the thumbnail for the next episode is already out. Yuoba with the Soul King. I don't even want to look at that or think about that. That shit looks insane. Yuoba's face fully blacked out. Oh, he's about to cause some chaos. I'll talk about that more in the intro of the next one. But uh, this last episode was phenomenal. We got to see the return of Aizen. And he definitely made the entrance I want to see. You know that cocky arrogantness out of him. But uh, shout out to Ukitake. Rest in peace to that man. He did a lot. You know he put his life on the live for Soul Society. And it is honestly just crazy how much Soul Society has to give up in order to stay in this battle. They lost Yama. They lost Unohana. Now Ukitake. The last OG is Shunsui. You know, I, I feel so bad for my man because I know it's definitely taking a toll on him. But as a leader, he's got to hold it down and just keep his composure. But... Let's just jump right into the episode. I will take the Soul King's place. And I think honestly Ukitake is the perfect person for this because he accepted that fact. No hesitation needed. He knew what his duty was at this given moment after um, the Soul King got cut down. So although they did do this chant, Ukitake still had the illness but he lived longer, right? But... Then we saw that shot where he kind of turned into that hand, which kind of foreshadowed like he would be in the factor of helping the Soul King in the future. But to me, it almost seemed like a pact that had to be made so he could remain in this state and live on. You know what I mean? Like with this imagery right here, it was just kind of saying like, you were going to take this power and become my helping hand in the future you know what i mean which i didn't even think about this man oh my god wait hold on is that where his hair turned white yeah he had dark hair i remember people were saying that and then it got stripped away from him i did not even notice that in the first one wow it's nice seeing all these old figures once again when Shun Swing and Ukitake were young and thrown down. Come on. They have potential, yeah. See, these two were top dogs. Potential would be great. And I do like how Shun Sui didn't hold back. It kind of shows he didn't underestimate Ukitake whatsoever. He gave him a fair fight. I doubt Ukitake would want him to go easy on him, you feel me? See, and they trade it. So, this does lead back to my question in the reaction. Would you say they're on the same scale? I, I would say they're on the same scale in this moment. I don't know about now, but let's say Ukitake wasn't sick. Would he technically surpass Shunsui in this moment I, I don't know I don't even know if that's like a question that could be answered or that's like more of a opinionated I mean now we're just waiting for good old Shunsui with that Bankai I can't wait to see what that does he's about to cause chaos I really love this wholesome moment man the music's showing Ukitake and Shunsui it's honestly so fucked up seeing this you know something like you know ukitake is gonna die they're just hitting us with the good times before it's all over so this is all ukitake's family he's a good big brother man like you cannot hate ukitake at the end he knew his duty his job did with no hesitation and he's just such a great guy no ill intent at all man Oh, that little shot. Them just chilling throughout the seasons. Left hand controls advancement. And the right hand stillness. So right now, sh oh, not Shunsui. Ukitake is that right hand that's stillness or balance. Keeping 
the three worlds intact. And the left hand's advancement, which, if I'm not mistaken, how does that even work? If the soul can... What does it mean by advancement? I was going to say maybe Ichibe has some relation to it. Because now the Soul King is technically dead. But now Ukitake is kind of holding him in place. It's just weird because I feel like advancement isn't something you could see in the moment. Like the stillness, if it's broken, we could see the three worlds coming to a close, right? But I feel like the advancement on the other hand is kind of... Like, we can't see that yet, so I'm not too sure about that. See, I feel like those words just kind of drilled Ukitake. Like, that's how Kayan was in the end, and the same way Ukitake was in the end. I really love seeing this scene of the, sh uh, like, OGs. Like, come on, dude, that's hitting Shinsui like a truck. You're telling me Ukitake's death isn't hitting him? It definitely is. He just holding it in, man. So that kind of relates back to what I was saying. Like, it's like a pact, almost. Like, he helped him out, so he's, like, relaying the favor back to him, you know? Helping him in this moment that he needed him. Yeah, look at that eye, bro. He hurt him. And, man, that's why Shunsui is such a great leader. The fact that he's willing to push forward even through all these losses he's taking. He was the perfect candidate for a head captain. With head ca being a head captain, you cannot be emotional. I mean, like, I feel like witnessing this, we're seeing a lot of maturity. Um... In fake hardcore town arc, we saw Aizen was fucking up everybody. And then out of rage, out of emotion, Shunsui went to try to attack him. And of course, he got caught because of the Kyoko Sugetsu. Yeah, Ichigo was fucking pissed. He is in the Almighty. But it looks like Ichigo was able to take over that Quincy. Wait, is he? I think he might just be swinging with the left. I think he's swinging with just the left. I can't tell. It's going so fast. He's like guilt tripping him. Like, hey, this was all you're doing. Which it technically was, but come on. You had some manipulation in there. Hey, don't let the dynamic duo on you. <laughs> he should have got blasted smithereens because of that hit. Okay. And this is where I bring up, he was in the Almighty. He could have read all that shit. He really, he didn't see him as any type of threat. So he just tanked it. <laughs> Yuma is such a fucking dickhead for that, bro. He is funny for that, bro. He said, hey, you got some youngins. Hop off me real quick. That shit light. <laughs> You know, there's only one person that uh, could save him right now, and that is Mr. B- No, I'm not even gonna do it. I'm not even gonna do it. <laughs> he did stand up to Aizen, man. Wow. And that was a big thing. That's why I didn't make a review last week, because I was just all over the place with Okay, let's say, I was thinking Ichibe had a countermeasure set with the Soul King. Not, like, I didn't think Ukitake was going to do all this. But I was thinking, like, okay, let's say there was a countermeasure to the Soul King's death, which the Soul King could foresee, right? Yuba could foresee, too. I mean, I don't know how far in the future, but definitely enough to see what the Soul King does. When he be, be able to just counter what the Soul King's precautionary measure is, but as we could see here, he was not able to witness it. So there are some limitations to it, which I wonder, like, to what extent, like, what covers it and what doesn't. Before we talk about this, I do want to talk about Ashida, Ugram, and the Royal Guard. They were, Ichigo, okay, every, Ichigo and the squad had to pass them to get to Yuaba, so that means... That they were not there anymore. They are pawing their own thing. 
And I have two theories for this. We did see Ishida in Soul Society, so maybe he's so, like they pulled up to Soul Society. They might have conflict with everyone there. Aizen's about to pull up there, so a lot of shit could go down there. But the poem was about Ichigo and Ishida, so I think there is going to be a clash between those two. So maybe is the whole thing where maybe Yuba's like, okay, I need to dip out. And they all pull up and start clashing with everyone up there. Ah, I don't know. I feel like Aizen's the type of guy he's going towards Yuoba. Like, of course he doesn't fuck with Soul Society, but right, he definitely doesn't fuck with Yuoba more than Soul Society. You know what I mean? So I think it's probably option two where Yuoba flees the scene. He does his own thing. We'll see where he goes from there. And then somehow him and Aizen come into contact. And then the Arogar Yugram Ishida come in contact with Yoruichi Sado, Sado Ganju and Ichigo up top. I was really wanting like a cocky, arrogant first response out of Aizen and we got it. I'm so glad to see that Aizen hasn't changed one bit. I was too in shock by like, you know, just being able to see Aizen once again. I completely like overlooked this. How many seals there are to hold down the Aizen, which I'm pretty sure they were saying it's 13, which like it corresponds to different parts of his body, which was like what he took like the mouth and ankles from him and something else. Like, goddamn, they probably locked up his damn piece too. Like, holy shit. Knowing Aizen, he's been way into shit talk him. <laughs> you could see some like scare in Shunsui's eyes. But after fake hardcore town, that traumatizing moment, the ass whooping they took from one man, he's like, okay, I know what you're doing. I know your game. <laughs> you still have two more keys. And dude, Aizen looks completely Okay, like, I guess we're comparing two different art styles. And maybe it's just the angle, but this dude looks completely different. I I think it's gonna look way different though when we see like the eyes and you know in the chair and everything. So I'm looking forward to seeing him when he's out of here. But I think it was the angle that made him look a little funny. He has that side eye. That shit looking perfect. Wait. So wait. 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 It was eyes and ankles. Left eye and ankles. Oh my god. Just one eye. So. If I'm not mistaken, I think you guys were saying all the things that are being released, it's like um, all these seals are like holding down his spiritual pressure. So as much gets uh, unlocked, that's how much Riyatsu spiritual pressure he has. So if he got unlocked fully, that's like his full Riyatsu spiritual pressure is what I'm getting. Okay, yeah, like see here, he looks great with side profile. Dude, they were going aura for aura, bro. I do not care. Like, they were both, like, you could feel that, like, animosity between both of them. They're both questioning each other, just pressing each other. Like, in a well-mannered fashion, you know what I'm saying? So, I assume Aizen, he will never be free. Like... I do not think he'll ever be free, but I still think he'll have a big impact in this arc. It's just gonna, it's gonna show the levels that Aizen is on. I'm kind of with Aizen. Fuck Central 46. Those corrupt bastards. Let us carry you to the surface. Cherisama. The infinite Cherisama. Okay. I bet you're missing breathing the air in Soul Society. And from one of, some of the comments... I don't even know what they're planning on doing. It's more of like, Aizen's not helping him because they're not, um, what's it called? They're not going to let him out. He's still going to have those seals on. He's just going to be in that chair, right? But it's more like they're going to, it's like the analogy of, oh, let me throw you into the lions, lock the door, good luck. He's going to tr try to not fight for soul society, but fight to protect himself from dying. If that's the case, I am hyped to see what Aizen could do in a restricted chair. What the fuck is he gonna do? We already saw the spiritual pressure 
he knocked off that fucking guard. Oh my god. I cannot wait. That filthy soul society air. Let's see it. Oh yeah, they're gonna restrain him in the chair. That's what it is. His fingers. That's with three of the Ryatsu restraints, right? Wait, wait, wait. The restraints do not... Okay, so the spiritual pressure is still out of this world. So it doesn't hold back the spiritual pressure. It holds back the radius of it. Wow. Oh my god. You will literally get decimated. That is such a flex. Oh my god. That's what I was saying. He about to throw him into the dogs. Protect yourself. <laughs> Both hate you about. Yeah. He's calling it pathetic soul society. But you know Aizen feels a way about this whole situation. Because let's say... He just allows it to happen. You about wins. That still ruins his image. Because you were technically still a part of Soul Society. And to have that image that, oh, they took out, uh, he took care of Soul Society. When you were still technically present in it, you were in the surrounding area. Oh, yeah, he's not going to let that slide. A lot to look forward to. I am excited for Aizen. Dude, I was. I saw Shunsui outside the prison and I started smiling. Like, that is some crazy type of glazing for Aizen. <laughs> like, we didn't even see him yet. So, now we're about to see what he's all about. We know he still has that Bankai on deck. I don't know what it could do. It's going to be crazier than the Kyoko Sugetsu, which was already crazy. And I just forgot, uh, when Ichigo and... Um, when Ichigo and Yuba fought, fought for the first time, we saw they uh, the Stearns left the scene due to Aizen messing with Yuba's perception of time. Which, I don't know what this necessarily means. Does that mean he has seen the Kyoko Sugetsu or something? He's under some type of hypnosis, I think. And I feel like that could lead into a crazy fight with Yuuba and Aizen. Kyoko Sugetsu Hypnosis vs. Future Reading. I feel like Aizen Loki might be able to counter Yuuba because if he's under the hypnosis, can he really read that true future? I don't know. I think Aizen's ability might be the counter to Yuuba's whole foreseeing the future, which I can't wait to see a clash between them. A lot to look forward to. I really think these next two episodes might be some of the best we have seen out of Thousand Year Blood War. I can't wait. I appreciate all of you guys for watching. I'll catch all of you in the next one. Peace out.